Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus, and I am a gigantic movie lover, and particularly an enthusiast of classic films. To give a small background about me, I've grown up a fun, excitable, hardworking kid, and frequently, my mother would be watching movies of every decade in the background while working around the house. I'd work with her as well, but a lot of the time, as a kid, I'd park myself on that couch and just get sucked into the magical medium of storytelling. Needless to say, I was inspired to work myself into the performing arts industry. I went to a performing arts high school, went to college for theater and film, and I'm very grateful to have been a working actor ever since. But one day, after 25 plus years of studying and knowing classic films, I just got so inspired to talk more about film that I decided to start this segment of rating my top 10 favorite and from what I believe the best performances given by my favorite actors. I'm starting from 10 and then working my way up to number one. And these lists are for actors who are no longer with us, sadly. So no one who is in the current mainstream, still working, will be on these lists since their next performance could very well be their best. Let's hope. To start off, let's talk about one of my favorite actors of all time, Jack Lemmon. He and Walter Matthau were household names growing up in my family. They're literally one of the best comedic duos who have ever existed in film. What, having done 10 films together? That's amazing. What makes them so timeless is their timing, their energy, how they listen to each other, and it's just a beautiful fact that they were friends in real life. While Walter Matthau had some dramatic roles that were absolutely fantastic, Jack Lemmon really had a bigger range of dramatic roles within his resume. He has a track record that speaks for itself, and quite honestly, if I could do a top 20 for Jack Lemmon, oh, I totally would. But 10 is just a good, solid number, so let's just go with that. Just the body of work with Jack Lemmon's career is just so rare, honestly, that not every film is perfect, but to have consistently solid good films in your repertoire is just outstanding to me. Okay, enough of the intros. Let's get to the top 10 best and favorite performances of Jack Lemmon. Number 10, Tribute. This was Lemon's seventh Academy Award nomination for Best Actor here, and it took me a while to see it since it wasn't really released on DVD, but when I did get a chance to see it, I was so excited. Lemon plays Scotty Templeton, a terminally ill Broadway agent who tries to make amends with his family and friends, but more so with his estranged son, as his colleagues prepare a tribute show for all of his work that he's done for his clients. This film was based on the play of the same name by Bernard Slade, who also did the screenplay. So needless to say, Jack Lemmon excels really well when it comes to stage play adaptations. Lemmon is so flamboyant and charming, yet you can see under the surface a man wanting desperately to have a genuine relationship with his son. I believe you could still find this film on YouTube if you want to take a watch. It is worth a watch. Number nine, Missing. Based on a true story, this film came out in 1982, starring Lemon and Sissy Spacek, playing a father and wife of real-life journalist Charles Horman, who goes missing during a Chilean military coup, and they do everything they can to try to find him. Sissy Spacek is amazing here, but Lemon is heart-wrenching, as again, a father, but trying to find his son when every avenue they go through to look for him, they come up shorter and shorter. One scene in particular is when Spacek and Lemon are at a football field where they believe their son was captured, and Lemon sees a man moving in the crowd, and he's wanting to believe that his son's coming to him. But when he gets closer and closer, revealing it's not his son, each cut to Lemon just breaks your heart so much that both he and Spacek earned Academy Award nominations for their work here. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Number 8, The Odd Couple based on the play of the same name by the great Neil Simon. Now, some of you may be thinking, number eight, really? Come on, man, this is a classic. Well, of course it is, but wait until you see the other seven and I think you'll understand. This was the second collaboration of Lemon and Matthau, and like I said, the chemistry these two share with each other is just as strong as Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello, among the many great film duos. Some people have said Lemon overacts here, but honestly, when you transition a play to a film, you have to give it a little different flavor. And I believe with Lemon's genuine intensity as Felix Unger, it makes Mathouse Oscar even funnier. I especially don't mind that it looks like a play either, because it gives you more of the inclination to listen to Neil Simon's brilliant 
Academy Award nominated screenplay. The film was indeed a huge hit, also earning Golden Globe nominations for Matthau and Lemon, and resulting as the third highest grossing film of 1968, inspiring its own TV series and a sequel. If you haven't seen it, watch it immediately. I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to laugh your butt off. Number seven, The China Syndrome. Came out in 1979 with Lemon playing a shift supervisor at a nuclear power plant who experiences an unusual and accidental vibration, which could have been lethal. While this vibration occurs, there is a news camera crew and reporter led by Jane Fonda and Michael Douglas who secretly film the incident and fight to get it shown to the public. This results in the fight against politics, greed, corruption, as Lemon is forced to reveal the truth of what could have happened, leading to a global meltdown known as the China Syndrome. The film is captivating all on its own with its Academy Award nominated screenplay, but with Lemon at the helm as Jack Goodell, you are on the edge of your seat the whole time. It is such a memorable treasure to see Lemon so simple and his brilliant use of stillness in this film, because we're used to seeing Lemon very flamboyant and energetic, right? Which he still has great, channeled, intensive energy in this film. So strong of a performance he gave makes this among the absolute best, resulting in a six Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. I highly recommend this one. Number six, Some Like It Hot. How can anyone leave this comedic treasure out of this list? Honored not only as one of the greatest comedies, but one of the greatest films of all time. This film honestly would not be the great success that it is if it weren't for the great performances of Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis, and of course, Jack Lemmon. If you don't know the story, Lemon and Curtis are jazz musicians who accidentally witness a mob hit, which for the movie was inspired by the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And so on the run from the mob they go, dress in drag, and make their way to a train with the whole band of female instrumentalists and their lead singer, Sugar, played by Marilyn Monroe. Hilarity ensues as both of them start to fall for Sugar and try to win her love while in drag. It's classic comedy in this case, with so many memorable quotes. It's ridiculous. Billy Wilder's screenplay is just off the charts here. Jack Lemmon is more the comic relief to Curtis's straight man, which gives him every opportunity to shine, especially when Joe E. Brown shows up. Oh my gosh. Some Like It Hot earned Lemmon his second Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. It is such a shame that he didn't win, but hey, nobody's perfect. Number five, Mr. Roberts. Came out in 1955 based on the play and novel by Thomas Hegan. This film itself has quite a story, let me tell you. From having three directors, production delays, tension on sets, among other things. But what holds this film really together are the performances, specifically by Jack Lemmon's Academy Award winning performance as Enzyme Pulver. Lemmon was actually an Enzyme in the Navy during World War II. So this role came with great joy and he genuinely steals every scene he's in. And that's no easy task, especially when you have Henry Fonda, William Powell, and Jimmy Cagney sharing the screen with you. Jack Lemmon even went as far as learning to become left-handed, just for a change of pace and for a good laugh. I have to give more props to Lemmon for this role, honestly, because this came out when he was just barely known. But this performance definitely helped him boost him into the limelight, and I highly recommend it. Number four, Save the Tiger. Came out in 1973 in Jack Lemmon's second Academy Award winning performance for Best Actor. This film was actually Jack Lemmon's quote unquote art film, where Paramount Studios didn't really expect this film to succeed. So Jack Lemmon agreed to take scale pay, which in that time was like $165 a week, which with inflation to today's money would be $1,000 a week. Jack Lemmon was so committed though, and when you watch his performance here, it is absolutely intense as he plays a fashion business owner who is on the verge of losing his business and at the same time suffering from PTSD with a midlife crisis on it. It is, I have to say, very much a downer, but what makes it so memorable is honestly Jack Lemmon's commitment and his honesty in the role. He lights up the screen with such electric energy that we feel for this man, trying to make life meaningful as the decade of which he's currently living in continues to bring him to his knees with the mix of old fashioned values to the new generation that's coming on after Vietnam. He absolutely deserved his Oscar here and Lemon has said himself that this performance was his most gratifying and emotionally fulfilling performance of his career. Number three, The Apartment. 
came out in the summer of 1960, starring Lemon as C.C. Bud Baxter, a small-time insurance clerk who has a sick apartment that his sleazy bosses want to take their flings to and use. He allows them to use it in hopes that he will move up in the corporate ladder. Soon enough, though, he falls in love with Shirley MacLaine's character, Fran, the office elevator operator, who also has some secrets of her own in order to get ahead. I absolutely love Lemon here. I remember seeing this as a kid, and I kind of related to his character of Bud at the time, being somewhat of a pushover, a nerd, clumsy, and just a hopeless romantic trying to get ahead in life. After seeing a lot of comedies from Lemon growing up, this was the first time really seeing him excel so brilliantly with romantic comedy, and it made me connect with him on that deeper level about love and trying to get ahead and what you're willing to sacrifice, what you're willing to to do in order to really progress yourself. Once again, he was nominated for Best Actor for this film, and it's a performance that will definitely go down in rom-com history. Number two, Days of Wine and Roses. This one hits me so hard every time I see it. I can honestly say it is a performance by Jack Lemmon that inspired me to pursue acting. For those of you who don't know the story, Jack Lemmon and Lee Remick fall in love through a carefree, exciting lifestyle filled with alcohol, sunsets, chocolates, roses, the symbol of what love is, right? Over the course of the story, we witness what happens to our protagonist as addiction takes them down a dark spiral. Adapted from the play as well, this is without a doubt a performance of the ages for Lemon. It was the film at the time of his career that really gave him the opportunity to showcase his dramatic side. It hits so close to home for him as well, as Lemon had revealed years later, he was an alcoholic and suffering tremendously through recovery. It only makes his character of Joe Clay so much more spellbinding. There's always that one scene in a movie that could seal the deal for a brilliant performance, right? And if you've seen Days of Wine and Roses, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Of course, it's that greenhouse scene, man, where Joe hides the bottle of liquor under a plant in his father-in-law's greenhouse they're staying at to continue their recovery, and falling off the wagon already, he struggles to remember where he put the bottle. It just moves me every time and strikes me every single time. It's not all depressing, of course, because we do enjoy seeing this couple genuinely fall in love. And when everything has gone downhill, we see in Lemon's eyes a slight glimmer of hope. This was Lemon's fourth nomination for Best Actor, and in my opinion, he should have won. I've seen it dozens of times, and I am moved to pieces every time I see it. Always an amazing film to be remembered. Here are just a couple of quick honorable mentions below. 12 Angry Men, the made-for-television remake that came out in 1997, with Lemon taking over Fonda's original role as juror number 8. So solid that even Ving Rhames, who won Best Actor at the Golden Globes, gave his award to Jack Lemon in tribute for him. A Life in the Theater, the made-for-television adaptation from the play by David Mamet, where Lemon plays an aging actor trying to stay relevant. Oh my gosh, this was absolutely brilliant. Even Matthew Broderick was fantastic in that. Grumpy Old Men, which how can you leave that? Another household movie my whole family watched together, which I cherish every moment of it. Seeing Matt Fell and Lemon as two grumpy old men. Tuesdays with Maury, a classic made-for-TV movie of the book with the same title, which came out only two years before Lemon sadly passed away. And it really does hold a special place in my heart. And another great TV adaptation of Long Day's Journey Into Night with Lemon playing James Tyrone Sr. God, how I wish I would have seen him when he did this exquisite play on Broadway. He actually did this performance on Broadway in which got a deal to do a TV special of the same film, obviously. He gives so much breath and energy to Tyrone Sr. that it remains one of my favorite adaptations of a play. Lemon was always brilliant with play adaptations. Number one for me... Glen Gary, Glenn Ross. This really was a tough decision between number one and two because honestly, I love, 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 love watching Lemon in this film more than Days of White and Roses. I could have this film on repeat because of the Pulitzer Prize winning dialogue, the fact that you have seven acclaimed actors leading this film. It's never dull and you always find something nuanced about each performance. The scene stealing Shelley the Machine Levine. Jack Lemon was practically bred to play this role which he does simply to perfection. He captures the heart and soul of a fading real estate salesman who has to make a great number of sales in one night or he'll be canned. Like I said, with the class act of heavy hitters, Lemon steals the show. He perfectly captures Shelley's desperation, charm, persistence, and ego inside and out. 
Having worked in sales myself for years, I have seen people like Shelly many, many times and give such heart and electricity to Shelly that you feel genuinely sorry for Shelly in many cases. The film was a slight sleeper hit, resulting in an Academy Award nomination for Al Pacino in the role of Ricky Roma, which was still amazing, but hands down, without a doubt, another nod should have gone to Lemon for this performance. Not only does he hold his own, he takes it, locks on it, and certainly closes the deal. So there's my top 10, ladies and gentlemen. So tell me, did I miss anything? What are your favorite performances by this incredible man? Please list in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's been such a huge pleasure being here with you all. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more to come. Be great.